Here we go, armchair engineer, you guys are back. We got the next project on the go. I've been talking to you guys about uh, fixing appliances and maintaining them and even picking ones up for dirt cheap, whether it be for parts or to repair yourself. It's time for me to put my money where my mouth is. I wasn't kidding about this um, subject. If you guys can work on small engines, big engines, you can do this too. Save a lot of money and a lot of hassle. So the wife said to me not long ago, she wanted to get a um, dishwasher and dishwashers aren't cheap and that's just the way it goes. Um, so being the armchair engineer that I am, I don't want to pay top dollar for it, but I also don't want to buy crap. So she says to me, or I said to her, listen, let's buy a used one, non-running. I can get it fixed. No problem for dirt, for very cheap pennies on the dollar. She said, all right. She rolls her eyes a little bit, but she says, it has to be two things. It has to be a kitchen aid to go with our other appliances, and it has to be uh, stainless steel. No problem. So you can see here we got our fridge and freezer, kitchen aid, lovely, and we've got our range over here, and it's a kitchen aid. And this style of kitchen aid, as you can see, it's got these matching handles, which are very nice. These match as well. So it had to be of the same model trim line generation if you will as our other two appliances so i'm on the hunt right now uh for a KitchenAid dishwasher to go right here this mini fridge we don't really use it anymore uh there was a dishwasher here about 10 years ago uh, but it was old They're like i mean i'm talking it was from like the mid 1980s so it's time to replace it and i'm going to show you guys how easy it is and uh, how rewarding it can be to hunt down something like an appliance for very cheap and repair it or you know use spare parts to repair your existing so stay tuned and forty dollars later yes forty dollars this is what we have ladies and gentlemen stainless steel with the matching handle kitchen aid i gotta get rid of this sticker i don't like stickers on my appliances but Anyways, so I think I did fairly well on Facebook Marketplace. I found a woman there. She was selling this. Um, she just said it stopped working. She had a technician came in and it wouldn't circulate the water. She just said the motor was dead. That's all I got from this. So <clears throat> I, she basically put a make an offer out there. I went in at 40. I thought she might say, no, nah, that's too low. She took it right away. So who knows what I actually could have got it for. I might be able to get it for $20, maybe $30, but a good deal is a good deal. Uh, I went ahead and uh, don't mind the scooter here. I took out the upper and lower tray. Uh, this is an extra drain hose. And uh, here's the kick plate right here. I just took those out. It was fairly clean. Um, oh, and that was another thing I wanted to mention. Obviously, it had to be KitchenAid. It had to be stainless steel. And I wanted the matching handle, the same generation or series. But I also, I mean, there couldn't be any damage to the front door. I mean, as much as I love a deal, I'm not going to buy something that's damaged. And the only other thing was it couldn't have been like absolutely disgusting. And I know there's some people out there that'll say, I would never buy a used dishwasher. That's disgusting. I, I, guys it's a dishwasher it's cleaning dishes you know unless somebody's completely neglected it they can be in good shape and this one was i um oh, come on door open um so yeah you gotta be careful of that i'm doing this one-handed again so i'll just show you guys here i cleaned it out which was obviously easy when you remove all the um all the racks uh, I use this, like I said, it, it wasn't anything over the edge. It was just Vim Power Shine Kitchen Cuisine. And I just used some paper towels. And uh, it turned out quite well. It's lovely. I think I, I got a heck of a deal. And I'm going to, in the next little uh, shot here, I'm going to flip this thing up. I'm going to put it on its back. And I'm just going to show you the inner workings of you know, your modern dishwasher, everything is, you know, underneath here. This is the business end of a dishwasher. I mean, you can see it right there. You have down here, you got your sump hole uh, that I got the filter out right now. Um, I've got the upper and lower wash arms out right now. 
but this is where everything happens. You got your seal here. Um, here's your hoses on the side. This is where your water, uh, you got your inlet valve here. So you would plug your water up there and then it comes up here and it comes through here <clears throat> and it circulates right out there. And then down here is your uh, fill. That's your, when it rises, it hits a certain point and it tells, uh, it tells the circuit board to shut the water off. And uh, okay, stay tuned. Okay, I got it on its side. These things are pretty, uh, pretty light. And like I said, I just wanted to show you, before I show you underneath, as I call it, the business end where all the inner workings are. I mean, these things are nothing. They're just a shell. You've got, you know, besides on the side here, your water, like everything else is just, it's just a shell. You got a door here. I mean, there is nothing to these. You've got great access. If you remove the dishwasher, you've got like wonderful, wonderful access at working at everything. So I'm just gonna show you the basic parts of the dishwasher here. And here's another thing I wanna point out, like look how clean it is under here. I mean, if it was a uh, like a house with a dog or a cat, you could have like hair and these can get really disgusting, especially as they age. And this thing looks great. I was so impressed. I thought, oh, I might get it under there and there might be, you know, mildew or who knows what you'll find. I mean, this thing looks awesome. She had no idea how old it was because she said she bought the house two years ago and it came with it. So this appliance very well could have been bought uh, to, you know, gussy the place up or or help flip it. And um, it just, a part went on it and she just decided, no, I don't want to spend that. You know, it could have been a $100 part, $200 part. So anyways, let's start here. Um, this is the uh, water inlet valve. Um, it, your hose... Uh, which comes from your water from your, like your taps there hooks up here and then you've got this um this is uh for your circuit board here and it's basically a solenoid it just uh when the computer tells it to open it opens and it's just like a solenoid and then when it tells it to shut it shuts that's all they are uh, now when she said that the motor wasn't working and that's what the appliance guy said i'm assuming she meant this right here which is, or sorry, this this whole assembly right here, which attaches to your sump. But this right here is your circulation pump. This is basically the biggest uh, part of this appliance. You might as well call it the heart. So I'm assuming I'm gonna do some tests that that is what's not working. Um, if you guys recognize this, this is a drain pump. I did that video on the LG washing machine and it used a drain pump as well. I mean, it's just the way it is. Water, it, you know, unless you have gravity on your side, which you don't, in this case, you, you need a pump. And uh, it's like the exact same. I've already had it off just to look, just to do a quick check. It's the exact same. And that's the thing, when you guys start working on these, just like vehicles, just like lawnmowers, a lot of things overlap and they're easy. Now this one here is a new one for me. It's called a diverter motor and I had to actually look that up and it does exactly what it says. It just, you have inside of here, you have your um, upper and your lower washer arm and this diverter pump diverts it back and forth from your lower spray arm to your upper spray arm just periodically. And I guess they do that for energy and water efficiency. So that was a new one to me. Like I said, you're all, you, when you do this, you're always learning. Uh, you got a couple sensors here. I think one's a temperature sensor. And then this one here, I'm, I'm going to have to look it up what it's called again. It's uh, It's got a funny name. And then you've got another sensor down here. I believe that's another temperature sensor as well. So this thing is not uh, another one here. I'm probably going to look these sensors up just to see what they are so I can explain to you guys. But I mean, this thing is not riddled with, um, you know, too much circuitry or complication it's very simple and um yeah so what i'm going to do next is i've got my power box here and i'm going to show you in the next uh clip i'm going to i've got my extension cord down here and i'm going to use it i'm going to uh, take my rats and i'm going to moret it into here uh into these factory wires here and then i'm going to after i have a moret uh, for safety I'm gonna plug it into the wall and I'm gonna give power to this machine and um, there's I didn't show you guys here I should have showed you in the last video 
but you've got up here your top controls. And new appliances now, just like uh, the LG washing machine that I showed you guys, it gave a code um, automatically. Well, these uh, KitchenAid dishwashers, apparently what you have to do is you have to punch a sequence of buttons in. And if, if, if you're sensing there's a trouble, and on this little beacon here, it'll flash. And it's almost like Morse code. And it'll flash a certain sequence. And you write the sequences down. And then that'll tell you the code. So I'm going to give power to this thing. And what I'm hoping is it says that it's this right here. I mean, that's kind of a, a funny thing to say. I hope it's this. This is the most expensive part on the, um, on the washing machine. Or sorry, uh, on the dishwasher. But I'm hoping that I can get a clear-cut code. And if I can't, or even if I do, I'm still gonna use my voltmeter and I'm gonna test everything to prove because I don't just like the part switch. I like to actually learn how and learn why. Uh, a lot of these parts, just like the drain pump, they can fail um, electrically and mechanically, which is what I explained or tried to explain in the LG video. So sometimes you can do a continuity test and it rings through, it shows great resistance and it, it rings like continuity, but then you put power to it and crunch, 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 crunch. It's failed mechanically, the bearings in the motor's gone. So those are two ways of uh, looking at it. Okay, let's get to work. One last overview of all the parts of this underneath before we move on to plugging it in and checking for error codes. I just want to clarify. Uh, so we have our water inlet valve. We have our thermostat right here we have our float valve right here for when it should shut off the water we have here our drain pump diverter motor this is our main guy right here our circulation pump uh, this sensor right here this is called your turbidity sensor and it uses light to determine um, how transparent or how murky or cloudy the water is and the cloudier it is when the light can't get through it, that's when it knows that uh, the, the water's dirty and it can no longer wash and it ends the cycle. Um, this guy right here and this guy right here, or I, sorry, I said they were sensors or not. This is your heating element. This is your one great big metal loop that uh, heats and dries your dishes. So you'd put a continuity tester across this and this and see if you had continuity and the resistance in the event that uh, it burnt out. Um, that's it. You got our junction box up here, which is what we're going to be uh, uh, hooking into. I just wanted to clarify that before we moved on. Pretty simple, ladies and gentlemen. Not too many parts, and every part on here is pretty self-explanatory. Okay, let's move on. So I've got my dishwasher plugged in. Um, you can see down here, I've got it wired into the receptacle box, and we are good to put it into diagnostic mode. So to do that, we have to find any three buttons. I believe these are the best on your option menu here. And you hit one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And after you do that three times and you have to do it quick enough, it'll go into diagnostic mode. All the lights will light up and then you close the door and then you watch this here. Okay, here we go. There we go. They're all lit up, close the door, make sure it's tight and watch for any flashing on this LED light. All up here, all up here is still lit up and it'll stay lit up until it runs through the diagnostic mode and it doesn't see anything. So, we got nothing. There are no error codes on this. Now, I don't know if, like I said, I've got it obviously plugged into power, but I do not have any water uh, plumbed to it. I just have it sitting here up on a table. So I don't know if that makes a difference. I know the LG, um, the LG washing machine it would only throw the code when it happened. If you So when it went through the drain cycle, that is when it would throw the code. If you reset it, washed clothes again, it would not throw the code again until it happened. So this may be the case. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna do a bit of a dry land operation here. I'm gonna get a garden hose. I'm gonna take this outside, 
and I'm gonna hook it up to here. Obviously I've got my power here and I'm good to go. I'm gonna literally run a cycle and see and watch it and see what happens. Um, and listen, uh, the woman I bought it from, she said that it happened during the circulation um, cycle that it just wouldn't circulate the water. So we'll stay tuned, but I'm gonna leave, uh, this is gonna be part one right now. I'm just gonna break this up into a couple parts so it's not a super long video. Um, so stay tuned, I'll have it out fairly quick because I wanna get this looked at. But if you like what you see, like, comment, and subscribe. Consider what I'm showing you guys. Like I, I just said, these things are dead simple. I'm gonna even show you a little more diagnostic, but um, yeah, stay tuned. Armchair Engineer 85 out.